Hello there, it's Mr. Robson. We're going to do a quick statistics review, go through a bunch of concepts rather quickly. Take a moment, read through this problem, because one of the things with statistics is there are always lots of words, um, but the computations are usually quite straightforward. So if you read this scenario here, you have a bunch of students collecting cans for recycling in Sam's class, and there's 20 students in total. And here's the number of cans collected, shown a stem and leaf plot. So the key says 3 slash 1 is 31 cans. So this 2, and let's say this 9, represents 29 cans collected by one of Sam's classmates. Okay, so the first question is asking us to find the medium number of cans collected. Well, if I know there are 20 students in total, that's n, so n is 20. So to find the median, I go n plus 1, I divide by 2, which will be 21 divided by 2, which is going to be the 10.5th position. So basically, I start counting from 10. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this is 11. Halfway between 8 and 8 is 8. And so the median number of cans is 38, recognizing that this is a 30 and this is an 8. Okay, and so, so following the box and whisker plot, showing the number of cans collected by Sam's class, write down the value of A. Well, these are connected. The smallest collection of cans is 20 here. So A is 20. That's the value of A. The interquartile range is 14, so that means the distance from here to here is 14 units. So if this is 30, this here is plus 14, 44. Um, and so just for fun, this is the median, so that is also 38. So if there are 20 students, that means it's four groups of five students each. So there's five students that collected between 44 and 50 cans. There's five students that collected between 38 and 44. Five students here and five students here. Even though this looks longer, this still has the same amount of students represented. Just means there's more variation on this quartile than let's say this quartile. Alright, so continuing along, okay, so just remember that Sam still collects, has 20 students. If Sam's class collects 745 cans, they want an average of 40 cans per student. How many more cans need to be collected to achieve this target? Well, we know that the average is going to be the total number, total number divided by students. So if I add them all up, I want this sum, which is 745. I'm going to add so many cans x, and when I divide it by 20, it has to be 40. And so solving for x, I can cross multiply, so 745 plus x is 800, and so x will be 55. So they need to collect 55 more cans. But this idea here of the total, that this is the total items collected divided by the number of students, is an important one that comes up. We often have to do that to get the average. Continuing along, now we're on to a cumulative frequency graph here. And so my cumulative frequency graph, let me reorient it a little bit so we can see everything. Okay, so there are 80 students in the school, and the students raise 10 cents for each recycled can. Find the largest amount raised by a student in Sam's class. Okay, so this is the school. So Sam's class, let's refer back to here. This is Sam's class. That's the largest. 50 cans was Sam's largest student. So I know... 50 cans, the large amount raised by student Sam's class is 50 times 0 0.1, which is going to be $5 in total. So now, using the following cumulative frequency shows the amount of dollars raised by all students. So here's dollars raised. This is the dollars raised by the cumulative frequency of number of students. And so we know 
that we are looking for five dollars. Well, five dollars is here. Let's make let's see if we can make that a little bit narrower so we can interpret a little bit better. Let's make it really thin. Okay, so here is the line. Find that is the five dollars. I want to find out the percent of students who raise more than Sam. Well, if I also come along here, so that means that is going to be 64 is the number. So I know 64 out of 80 students, that's the total, raised less, $5 or less. So that means then more than 64 students. So that is going to be 80 minus 64, 16 out of 80 is how many raise more than anyone else in Sam's class. So if I do 16 divided by 80, that is 20%. So therefore, 20% of students raise more than anyone else in Sam's class. That's how we use our frequency, cumulative frequency. And then now we have the mean number of students who collected cans is 39.4 and the standard deviation is 18.5. Each student then collects two more cans. So if I think about this, so that means this is now 22, 23, 26, 31, 31, 33, and 39, 39, and so on. So every number on that list is going to go up by 2 which means that the total overall will go up by 40, which then means this is also going to go up by 2. So the new mean, the new mean, x bar, is going to be 41.4. I just add 2. Because when I take my mean and I add values to it, the mean gets added as well. The standard deviation, though, standard deviation, what if I think about this spread here? Standard deviation is a spread. Now this is 52. Still 52 is the highest, 22 is the lowest. It's, everything is relative to each other. And so they're still the exact same amount of spread. We haven't, so here's a distance. All that's happened is all these values have shifted up the same amount. If this spread would have gotten bigger, then the standard deviation would change, but the spread stayed the same. And so the standard deviation here is also going to maintain being 18.5. Standard deviation is sigma, or I could also call it S. And finally, the mean number of cans collected is 39.4. And the standard deviation is this. Each student collects two more cans. Each can receives this much for recycling, which is the revenue. Okay, determine the mean of the revenue. So I know now that as opposed to 39.4, the new mean is 41.4 cans is what people are collecting. But I want to know the revenue, so I'm going to multiply this value by 10, and by 10 cents, which will be then dollars 4.14. And so each of these cans gets 10 cents, and so this is true. And so what happens if I take my value, my mean, I can multiply it. If it gets multiplied like this, the mean also gets multiplied. If the mean gets added things, it also gets added, gets the new mean. The new mean, let's say, or the new mean also can be multiplied. However, the standard deviation let me switch to green now. The standard deviation, I know when I add two cans, it still remains the same as 18.5 as a standard deviation. But now I'm going to take each of these cans, and what if I think about this, I'm going to take each of these values and I'm going to multiply it by 0.1. Like it's going to go, the decimal place, gonna, it's going to be, as opposed to 22 cans, it's going to be 2.2 is what it's worth. 
And so in essence, what happens is interval that was this long shrinks to this long because the numbers are smaller. And so this, when I multiply these values by something, it does affect the standard deviation. And so 18.5 is not affected by this, but it is going to be multiplied by 0 0.1. And so the new standard deviation will be $1.85 as the new standard deviation. Because the standard deviation does get multiplied by values, but does not get affected by the adding. All right, uh, I hope that's a quick little review and it's helpful.